It's number one, South Carolina. They go for their 29th win of the season today with all the emotions. It is senior day. Three seniors honored before they host Tennessee today. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. South Carolina has already grabbed that number one seed in next week's SEC tournament. But for Tennessee, they need a win today or an Alabama loss in order to get a top four seed, meaning they would get a double bye in Greenville. Let's go. We're excited to be with you here from Columbia, Courtney Lyle and Debbie Antonelli. If I would have told you at the beginning of the year that South Carolina would be undefeated on the final day of the regular season, what would you say? <laughs> I would have said no way. Too many question marks, graduated five players to the WNBA draft. Too many issues to wonder about whether they had enough talent, did they have enough experience? All those question marks were resolved in the first week, really, because they really laid it out. Yeah, they jumped up to number one after that first week, and they have been there ever since. We mentioned the seniors that they've honored. Camila Cardoso is one of those. You cannot ignore six, seven in the paint. No, and she influences the game in many different ways. Not only can she score on putbacks, drop-offs, rim runs, and lobs, she's a tremendous defensive player who leads this team. They're the best shot-blocking team in the country. Then there's the counter, Tiana Pow Pow. Tahina Pow Pow can get in the paint. She can score off the bounce. She's a tremendous catch and three, triple, and she is a terrific part of their two-way guard package. Both had the option to come back next season. South Carolina, the only undefeated team. They are dominating opponents, too. Their scoring margin is tops in the nation, outscoring opponents by 33. They also have an SEC record of 46 consecutive SEC regular season wins, looking for 47 today. Well, Tennessee has got to have Rakia Jackson come to play today. They need her big time. She had 19 points the first time against South Carolina. Yeah, she's 6'2 in the paint, and she can score on the perimeter. They need her ball screen offense to be really good around her today. Sonia Fagan, her second career start in back-to-back -back games. She'll be down low with Camilla. Fifth sellout of the season, a South Carolina single season record, and they are ready to take on Tennessee. Immediately inside for Sonia Fagan gets the touch going around Sarah Puckett and Rakia Jackson with the rebound. The right pace will be important for Tennessee and their guard play is going to have to be really good to match what South Carolina can bring on the perimeter. Put back is no good by Tamari Key. The first time these two teams met, Tennessee led at the half as my laser for Wiley finishes. Well, you know that move is coming. <laughs> I mean, that's her patent signature move right there when she slices in the paint and goes off with her right hand. But back to that first meeting. Tennessee led at the half. It was tied at the end of the third quarter. How did the Lady Vols push South Carolina the first time? Game slippage was an issue in the fourth quarter. Execution will be important. You have to stay, stay with South Carolina on the boards. You can't give them extra possessions by turning it over. You can't let them crash the offensive glass. And you've got to guard to Haina Pow Pow outside the three-point line. Sarah Puckett had the bucket on the other end for Tennessee. Jules Spear knocked that one away from Pow Pow. And the shot chart for Cardoso is outside two feet in the paint. Rakia Jackson, open lane. South Carolina fans wanted a little shuffle of the feet. Transition early for Tennessee. They're looking for some early offense so they don't have to go against the nation's best quarter court defense. Spear trying the other side. Jules Spear coming off 16 points against Texas A&M Thursday. Puts up the three. Bree Hall looking at her options. It rolls out. She gets it back. Tries the other side, and it's true. What a pace early on for both clubs. Tennessee does not mind a quick hitter, a quick shot. 
if it's the right person taking it. Tahina Pow Pow shoots it better than anyone in the nation from behind the arc. You know, I broke down today all of her three-point makes. 66 coming into the game, 54 catch and shoot. Just like that, 12, she had to dribble into her shot. Tennessee's got to make her dribble into her shot. Her percentage is too good on a catch and shoot three. Tahina Pow Pow accounts for 20.2 points per game when you count her assist numbers in there, all the points that she touches, along with those that she scores. When in doubt, you throw it inside to Cardoso. Because South Carolina pushes, you get the mismatch with Rakia Jackson. A great seal inside for early offense by Cardoso. 7-0 run for the Gamecocks. Tamari Key has to be a factor as well. She's got to put some pressure on Cardoso. Jewel Spear for two. What a good start for Jewel Spear. If she could see a big basket and a big rim for Tennessee, it would be a huge help to open up the paint. Now we've seen her put up big numbers. She had 30 points against Ole Miss this season. Second chance goes for Camilla. At 6'7", she's huge. I mean, she's just big. Literally. I mean, <laughs> she takes up a lot of space. She's got an incredible reach. It's a great weapon for South Carolina. Rakia Jackson coming in and shooting over the smaller Pow Pow. Reject the screen, help coming late. Good take by Jackson. Rakia's coming off 27 points in their Thursday contest. Here's Malaysia for Wiley. In and out. Jasmine Powell tried to corral it and she is fouled by Sanaya Fagan. Well, let's take a look at our Legends of Coaching Spotlight brought to you by Principal. Of course, it is Dawn Staley. She has brought two national championships to South Carolina, five Final Fours in the last eight tournaments. And you mentioned everybody's been surprised at how good South Carolina has been. I think Dawn Staley, too, she didn't know what she had coming into the year. Yeah, six was the preseason ranking. And in the very first week, they jumped to number one. And they have been number one since with their undefeated 28 game winning schedule in front of them so far. They have been fantastic in front of a full house. This is absolutely amazing. I was here in the very beginning when Dawn's teams were not very good and there was no one here. I always like to say no lines at the concession stands, no lines at the bathroom, parking not an issue. Now you have all those challenges, but those are good challenges because the administration supported Dawn as the product got better. Debbie, there's always a line outside the building now. Yes, that's the, be that's the best kind of line. <laughs> Traveling violation on Tennessee. Again, fifth sellout of the season. That is a South Carolina record. What is this, 12 years in a row they've led the nation in attendance? Nine. Nine. Feels like 12. Yeah. Oh, this ISO game right here is where Watkins has been really good. Texas A&M tried to force her back into the help. And when she did go back into the help, she was still able to score right here. You see the whole side of the floor is cleared out. You got to be able to go rim body ball and use your left hand. What happened to players finishing on the left side of the floor with their left hand? You should know how to do that as, D, as a D1 player. Oh, look at that seal. Ashlyn there, Watkins. There's the left. So she's got it. She's got it. Camila Cardoso trying to fly in, and her shot's knocked away. Kaya Wynn looking inside for Jillian Hollingshed, and a third turnover by Tennessee. I mean, and, and she had, Hollingshed had some position inside. Cardoso short on the putback. Camila Cardoso, one of the seniors honored today. Why there were happy tears yesterday at practice when we come back. We got a chance to do something pretty special. Yep. Yep, Camila. Camila. Let, let's bring the people who also made that sacrifice for the past eight years to be away from your family. <laughs> For as long as you've been away from your family, we wanted to make this day special. 
Bring her, bring her, bring her, her mom and her sister out, y'all. Emotional reunion yesterday. Camila Cardoso's mom and sister are here from Brazil. Camila left home at the age of 15. They have not seen her play in the U.S. since until today. South Carolina pulled resources, got them a visa to come over. A couple of weeks ago, they took a 12-hour bus ride to get a visa, and they were immediately rejected and not able to come see Camila. So. Yesterday, Debbie, I can tell you watching this live at practice yesterday, I had tears in my eyes. I can't imagine what Camilla was feeling. I, I know how much I miss my kids when I don't see them for a couple of weeks. I can't imagine eight years as a mom going without being around your daughter. And you could see the smile and the pure joy on their faces, and you saw it in the tears of joy by Camilla. So absolutely fantastic. And kudos to Coach Daly and the South Carolina government for being able to make that happen. A very special senior day for Camila Cardoso, along with Tahina Pow Pow and Sakima Walker, who are also honored here today. See, I think Rakia Jackson turns the screen against Cardoso and gets a two feet in the paint before she kicks the spear for that three. Watkins working on Jackson. Offensive foul on Ashlyn Watkins. Watkins coming off the bench again today. She needs to do that in order to stay eligible for the SEC Sixth Woman of the Year Award. This is just a good job defensively of establishing and obtaining legal guarding position in transition. Remember, in women's college basketball, the arc on the floor doesn't matter. Clear out. Joel Spear trying to drive on Raven Johnson. Kaya Wynn in the corner. Seven seconds. Walker doing a good job denying Jackson. Wynn gets it up, but it's short and into the hands of Raven Johnson. She'll push. That's South Carolina's defense forcing Tennessee to take the shot they want them to take, not the shot Tennessee wants. South Carolina first in the nation in field goal percentage defense. Little flex cut action to isolate Watkins. Tessa Johnson for two. Another shooter off the bench for Dawn Staley. How many times did we say that last year? Not very many. And that's the biggest difference between last year's team that went 36 and 0 into the final four and this year's team packed with two way guards. They had 64 bench points in their last game. They outscored South Carolina's whole team, or excuse me, Arkansas's whole team. Well, coming up next, we will have another top 25 matchup. Number 22, Louisville, and number 17, Notre Dame. A little rematch, and then the afternoon triple header capped off with a rivalry between Duke and North Carolina. ACC tournament seeding up for grabs. Debbie, you'll we be there next week. Yeah, we have no idea except for Virginia Tech's number one. I think in the ACC, we meaning women's college basketball, and that is outstanding for fans and not so great for coaches. They'd like to have a little bit of an idea, but that next couple games coming up out of the ACC will be outstanding. Hey, Jewel Spear came to play. That's four points now. She drives it to the hoop. You know, Jewel Spear from Wake Forest was a ball dominant guard, played a lot of ball screen action, had the green light anytime. And I, I think as the season has gone on, I think she's become more comfortable in her role with Tennessee. Now they have pushed her all year to impact the game more than just being a three point shooter. And we've seen her do that. Her points coming from inside the arc today. Well, she's good off the bounce, and she has to be able to use some of her ball sk handling skills with the ball outside to get inside the paint. She's been able to do that a little bit better. Ashlyn Watkins at the free throw line. This is the first. It was the first foul whistled against Rakia Jackson. Kelly Harper with a lot on the line today in the SEC tournament. You'd like to be on that four line so that you get the double bye, which is critical. I think in conference tournaments this year, if you don't get the double bye, I don't see how you win. The leagues are too good, too talented at the top. And to have to play an extra day against talented teams is, is a tough challenge. 
His first foul whistled against Raven Johnson. Yeah, Tennessee needs a win today or an Alabama loss in order to be a top four seed in the SEC tournament. Alabama on the road today at Texas A&M. Alabama beat Tennessee, so they have the head-to-head -head right. advantage. Two up and in for Jasmine Powell. Tennessee showing zone. Matching up. We saw a little bit of this matchup zone against LSU last Sunday. Hard to play zone against one of the best offensive efficiency teams in the country. They can beat you in a lot of ways, can South Carolina on the offensive end. Tessa Johnson showing she likes the baseline today. Jillian Hollingshed getting physical. They need that from her, and she is fouled by Kitts. And I want to give a little shout out here to Hollingshed because she has posted up hard every time down the floor. And what that does is changes the space around her offensively. You got to keep having that kind of work ethic, but also have the patience to let your guards know that you're working and you need to throw it in there once in a while. So Naya Fagan back in the game to replace Watkins. Hollingshed at the line. One of her best games was against Arkansas this year. She had her first, she had a double-double, 14 points, 10 rebounds. A player that averages five points, five rebounds a game. I thought Tennessee's shoot-around last night was loose and fun, but I also thought that Kelly Harper got a couple of really good pieces of execution in out of her team. A couple tweaks. We'll be looking for those today as the game goes on. Kids at the elbow. I think you really got to challenge Rakia Jackson defensively. She has one foul already, too. Yes, challenge her. Kitts drives, kicks to Bree Hall, six seconds. Fagan. Spear on the move. Outnumbered, and Fagan shuts that down. Bree Hall looking for the transition three. Good hands by Hall. And Tennessee wanted a double dribble. I think Saniya Fagan got away with it, and Bree Hall's going to get the bucket. Well, there was a critical point in the LSU game where there was a missed double dribble, and Kelly Harper actually talked to us about it yesterday. It still bothered him because the game changed. They got a three off of it. Three in the corner by Haley Van Lith. Off the hands of Tess Darby, and so South Carolina will have 17 seconds left in the quarter. Five turnovers by Tennessee here in the opening 10 minutes. Well, if you're going to turn it over against South Carolina, it needs to be a dead ball turnover. And that drift pass right there just wasn't a good connection. Plus, the South Carolina defense not only turned you over, they're taking Tennessee deeper into their offensive options. You want to make Tennessee get into that third and fourth option offensively. Tennessee has brought in Tamari Key and Kaya Wynn. South Carolina brings in Malaysia Full Wiley. She's their second leading scorer. And South Carolina doesn't get the shot off. Gamecocks up by six after 10 minutes. It was an emotional start here with the seniors celebrating Senior Day. Pow, pow for triple, two feet in the paint, two points, Cardoso. One of the things about South Carolina that you appreciate is their transition game, and it all starts with Raven Johnson, their point guard. When she rebounds, she immediately slices the floor, gets up the court, and look at how many South Carolina players are already running ahead of the ball. When you run ahead of the ball, Raven Johnson 
will find you. She's one of the top assist players in the SEC, fifth in the nation as she leads the SEC in that category. Now watch Raven right here on the outlet. She's not coming back for the ball. She's already going up the court when she receives it. And look at her vision. Chloe Kitts running ahead of the basketball. If you don't stop Raven Johnson, she's going to slice and dice and pick you apart in transition. Raymond out of high school is the number one point guard in her class, number two overall. Remember her first year, she had that knee injury in November and missed the season. But you've got her, and then you add Tahina Pow Pow, who gives a different look when she's running the point. That makes it even harder to play South Carolina's offense. I just think there's so many variables that Dawn Staley can dial it up any way she wants. Pow Pow gives them a little more stability, a better scorer on the top of the floor. But the speed and the pure quickness of Raven Johnson is tough to keep in front. Pow off the mark, second opportunity. Full Wiley had all day looking for her teammate inside. Instead, Kitts, no. I think that's one of the unselfish qualities about South Carolina is that their assisted basket is 57%. I think it's a real endearing quality about how connected this group is and how hard they work to get the best shot. Yeah, that is the best that has been since the 2014-15 season, them assisting on 56.7% of their buckets. And Rakia is fouled by Kitts. Well, our final ESPN Big Monday doubleheader of the season, two crucial rivalry matchups. Number 10, Duke squaring off against NC State at 7 Eastern, and then number 15, Baylor hosting Texas in Waco. Both also available on the ESPN app. Duke coming off a huge win at home over Virginia. There was much anticipation for Tony Bennett's team at Virginia to get a quad one win. And NC State with a tough one in Chapel Hill. And Baylor knocking off Kansas to give Bill Self two losses in a row. It's really fun on the men's side, too. There's a lot of good teams, and that tournament is going to be outstanding as well. A lot of the women's tournaments, including the conference tournaments, including the SEC tournament kickoff this week. SEC tournament starting Wednesday in Greenville. That last foul, by the way, was on Malaysia Full Wiley, her first. What a first step. Wow. Quick. Powell's got to get it under control right here. Defense turned up. It's infectious what Full Wiley has provided on the top of the floor. Jasmine Powell for three. Well, that's, that, a, that's a great sign because her last two games, she was shooting 14% from the field. <laughs> that's how you neutralize some of that aggressive overplaying ball pressure. It's the first three for Tennessee. Up and in, and the foul. Watch where Cardoso catches this basketball. At 6'7", two feet in the paint, it's almost impossible. You have to contest, make her score over, but do not foul. And you got to beat her to the spot, Courtney. That's the key. Don't let her catch it that deep. Her shot clock is all points in the paint, right around the rim, two feet, three feet around the bucket. Her mom and sister watching on, loving it. Again, first time that they are seeing her play in person in the States since she moved here when she was 15. The other thing, too, is you got to have your full pressure package in against South Carolina. you got to welcome the ball pressure that's coming which means back doors, high post entries, you know, dribble entries, and then shot fakes and pass fakes. You have to be able to add that to what you do to prepare for South Carolina. Second foul on Kitts. She subs out. Ashlyn Watkins back in. Seconds. Jasmine Powell's got to go. And a shot clock violation. Well, 
mentioned Camila Cardoso's family, Tahina Pow Pow's family also in attendance, got the t-shirts, again, started her career at Oregon, now made her home at South Carolina. One of her brothers actually moved here to Columbia with her. Well, she's been terrific. I think in the portal, she has been the best transfer, the best pickup in the nation. And there's a leak out by Jackson. Rakia up and in, she's got eight. And to think, Tahina thought she was going to go play at TCU until she got a call from Don Staley. She said, Don Staley's calling me? How about that? I think you answer that phone call. I think you always answer it when Dawn calls. <laughs> Foul. You got to have somebody for defensive balance that when the shot goes up, you got to get back. And no one got back. And this is an easy two points for Tennessee. That's probably part of the reason why Raven Johnson might be getting sent to the bench right now. She's the person responsible for that for South Carolina. Joel Spear just picked up her first foul for Tennessee. I think Tennessee picking up their D a little bit. Full Wiley, no. You think she's the crowd favorite in here? Why not? She's a highlight reel. I mean, she's local. Out of Columbia, along with Ashlyn Watkins. Powell waiting in the corner. She said two big ones. That's the second time Tennessee has scored off rejecting ball screen action and driving baseline. Rakia Jackson got a short jumper. This time, the drift pass to the deep corner. First lead for Tennessee since it was 4-2. Mari Key took a shot to the face. Reject or refuse. Either way, you don't come off the ball screen. Watch right here. You go draw the help. The tag comes from the weak side. The rotation late on the back side. And Jasmine Powell sit, hits another big shot. Oh, Tamari Key took an elbow to the face. Cassie Daly, the athletic trainer for Tennessee, over there with Tamari Key on the bench right now. The previous, the previous play is under review for a possible unobserved foul. While they look at that, we will step aside. Tennessee attending to Tamari Key right now. Just incidental contact, nothing to upgrade there as Tamari Key went up for a rebound and the elbow came down in her face. So Cassie Daly and the Tennessee training staff looking after her will keep an eye on Tamari. Tennessee projected to be an eight seed in the NCAA tournament by Charlie Cream, who's in the studio. They need a win today or an Alabama loss in order to be a top four seed in the SEC tournament and get that double bye. Ooh. And Rakia Jackson and Ashlyn Watkins got tangled up. Rakia got thrown to the floor, but all smiles. Good to see them get up quickly. A little hook and hold action. Uh, that would be one that you would probably look at, to be honest. The other one was definitely incidental, but Tennessee doesn't seem to be asking for it, and the officials didn't seem to think that there was anything excessive or unnecessary about it. It is the second foul on Ashlyn Watkins, so she takes the seat. Remember, Chloe Kitts for South Carolina also with two fouls. Jewel Spear, no. Really good execution, though. Kelly Jolly Harper getting the shot she wants coming off the timeout. I like it. Full government name. Kelly Jolly Harper. Well, that, <laughs> I mean, when you win three national championships, I think you Absolutely. Can Coach Harper got her 100th win at Tennessee earlier this season against Vanderbilt. In her fifth year, leading her alma mater. First foul against Hollingshed, so Caroline Striplin comes in. So she can give them some physicality down low. Yeah, and this is the fourth foul that Cordoso has drawn on the Tennessee defense. That's another impact of her size 
in her post-up ability at 6'7", that puts your team in, in, under so much duress. Because she can foul out your whole front line. And you already are small anyway when you go against Cardoso. Yeah, Rakia Jackson, Tamari Key, and Jillian Hollingshed for Tennessee all have one foul. The kick to test Darby. Offensive board for Rakia. You know there's a mismatch on the floor. You got to find it. It's right here. It's Jackson and Cordoso. Very good patience by Tennessee. Off the offensive rebound. It's a scramble defensively. Good job by the Lady Vols to find the right matchup. And Rakia Jackson in the double figure. She's got 10. Pow, pow. Yes! Splash. Beautiful. Three Hall on Rakia Jackson now. She'll take the three. Ooh, in and out. I like it. I like her hunting shot. She's moving without the ball really well today, early. Breezy. <laughs> South Carolina challenges you at every segment of the game. You cannot make a mistake. They will maximize it. So whistled for the foul on Tess Darby. Tahina, pow pow, off the offensive rebound. Cardoso gets a lot of assists like this. Offensive rebound, assists to pow pow, and then in transition, tremendous ball fake. One hard dribble to create some space. And there's a lot of pow pow in the building tonight. <laughs> Don Staley has talked about how Tupahina Pow Pow has become that leader almost immediately when she transferred in with this group. Brought this group together. This is a very close group, a group that communicates all the time. They're confident. They have been all season. Very well connected on both ends of the floor. A hardworking, competitive group that has a tough mindset and is competing every day for playing time. That's what you want in a program. That's why you got sustainability. Tessa Johnson off the mark. Tennessee has outscored South Carolina 13 to nine here in the second quarter. Hey, Cardoso's coming out to block a shot on the three point line. How about that pump fake by Darby? You gotta be pumping and going. Can't hesitate. The foul was whistled against Sanaya Fagan her second. So now it's Ashlyn Watkins, Chloe Kitts, and Sanaya Fagan with two fouls. Good to see Tamari Key back in the game. Took an elbow to the face earlier. the first quick shout out to the athletic trainers Cassie Daly for Tennessee Craig Oates for South Carolina it's National Athletic Trainer Month fun fact for you yeah a shout out to the managers it was manager appreciation week last week managers were celebrated at pregame with the seniors for Dawn Staley it was cool great hall in the corner Three threes for South Carolina. They're back on top. Stays with Tennessee. Well, on ESPN, NBA Sunday night doubleheader starts with the Cavs hosting the Knicks at 7 Eastern, followed by the Thunder taking on KD and the Suns. Coverage tips at 6 Eastern with NBA Countdown.
Big NBA news, LeBron, 40,000 points. Is that all? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was incredible. Huge. They stopped the game last night. I mean, they should. Yes. Foul shot is off the mark. Cardoso is fouled I mean, by Tamari Key. I mean, Key is buried in the rim. I mean, totally buried in the net. Watch Cardoso. She's just calling for the ball. If you don't throw that pass in there, that foul doesn't get called. That is a great job by Cardoso. I mean, she's going to put her in the fifth row pretty soon. <laughs> Key will take a seat with those two fouls. How do you avoid that? Just body her you up? You gotta get off the contact, hollow out, get around. Use a swim move, something. You gotta have better ball pressure too on the passer. It's challenging, but you gotta get off the contact. Cardoso's got 12. Two rebounds away from a double-double. Tennessee needs a really good piece of execution right here. Nakia Jackson needs to work hard off the ball. seconds. Cardoso didn't even need a dribble. What a beautiful feed by Pow Pow. Assessing all options, eyes up, sprinting to the deep corner. Good execution by South Carolina. It's not just the pass by Pow Pow, it's how hard South Carolina runs through and accelerates in transition. Deep, two shooters to the deep corner. You see Raven Johnson slice through the middle and Pow Pow does a nice job of finding Cardoso at the front of the rim. Can't execute any better than that. It's beautiful. And that's an example of their ability to stay connected, even in transition. Tennessee's gonna call a timeout. We step aside, but only for 30 seconds. A minute 29 to go. Back here in Columbia, Courtney Lyle and Debbie Antonelli with you. South Carolina on a 7-0 run. Remember in the first meeting between these two, Tennessee led at the half and it was tied at the end of the first quarter. South Carolina would eventually get the win, but Tennessee right now hasn't had a field goal in almost three and a half minutes. Yeah, I think Rakia Jackson needs to be more aggressive, more assertive, work without the ball, get a quality catch. She's got 10 points, but four of nine from the field. Raven in the corner, no. That is a beautiful, brilliant cut. The ball pressure in the backcourt forced the switch. This is just a great basketball play. Rakia Jackson doing such a nice job. Watch the change of pace here. Watch what happens. Raven Johnson ball watching turns her head. You're supposed to go back door. It's a great cut by Rakia. It's projected to be a top five pick in the WNBA draft. She's got a pretty good game to yeah, take to the next level. I mean, she's going to take a challenge at number two because we know Caitlin Clark's going at number one. It's going to be based on need after Caitlin Clark. Shakima Walker now in for South Carolina down low. Also her senior day. Pow, pow. Too easy. Shot clock still on. Yeah. 
Spear just covered up. There she finds Rakia Jackson just short. And then a foul. It's going to be South Carolina ball as the foul is on Kaya Wynn. I mean, Rakia Jackson does the hard part. She gets to the other side of the rim. All she had to do was lay it up with her left hand. She's got 13. We had 19 in the first meeting with South Carolina back on February 15th. Bree Hall's got some free throws coming. Mylasia Full Wiley in for South Carolina, replacing Raven Johnson. Jasmine Powell in to replace Kaya Wynn. Shot of the half can beat Tennessee's. Got to go to Rakia, right? I mean, that's what I would draw up. There she is on the block. Bree Hall trying to front her. And Bree Hall gets the block and the turnover. An 11 to 3 run to end the half for South Carolina. And the Gamecocks have its largest lead. Bree Hall has made some big defensive plays. How about this one? A block on Rakia Jackson. And South Carolina leading at the half, 40 to 32. Back to Kevin Connors in the studio. South Carolina, the number one team in the nation, trying to finish off an undefeated regular season. And the Gamecocks up 40 to 32 at the half. Courtney Lyle and Debbie Antonelli with you. Tennessee really pushed, kept, kept it close there in that first half. What did you see out of the Lady Balls? Well, I thought they moved the ball. They got side to side in their offensive execution. I thought when uh, they were early in their offense, they were much better than when they got deep into the shot clock. Some of that has to do with South Carolina's defense. Some of that is Tennessee's execution, but Rakia Jackson was fantastic in the first half. And then there's the balance of the Gamecocks. Cardoso two feet in the paint, Bree Hall off the bounce, and then Pow Pow, the nation's best by percentage outside the arc. Really a lot to defend. And now for today's game track, brought to you by E-Trade. South Carolina, just so many different weapons. See the stats, South Carolina, plus six on the blacks in the first half. Already two players in double figures for the Gamecocks. Camila Cardoso, 14 points. She's a rebound away from a double-double. And Bree Hall with 11. Again, the Gamecocks already have secured that number one seed in the SEC tournament next week. Tennessee needs a win today or an Alabama loss in order to get the double bye. How about that play off the halftime by Dawn Staley? Isolation clear out. I thought she was going to dunk it. Sarah Puckett takes the open look. She could do it. Talking about Ashlyn Watkins. She's dunked twice in her South Carolina career. One was this season earlier against Kentucky. She gets the start here in the second half. Ashlyn Watkins and Mylasia Bulwadi have been terrorizing South Carolina high school girls basketball players yeah. for years. <laughs> I've watched it. I mean, terrorizing them. Both Columbia natives staying at home to play. Good look for Rakia. Off the flex cut. Really good job by Tennessee to get the shot they want. Not the one South Carolina dictates. Pow Pow right to the SEC logo, misses the floater, and Cardoso traveled. We mentioned Ashlyn Watkins. Let's take a look at her, a former McDonald's All-American. We mentioned her dunking. Well, she had that coming in. In 2022, she became the third women's player to win the dunk contest, and then she would have a dunker freshman year at Clemson and then won this season. I mean, it looks like it's so simple for her. She has really added to her skill set. Like, she's going to be getting it off the glass and initiating transition next year. I think Watch. she's the oh, SEC yeah. sixth woman of the year this oh, yeah. year. Oh, easily. 
Six seconds for Tennessee. Look at that close out on a three-point shooter. Jackson had to let it go. Raven Johnson with the rebound. Up ahead to Bree Hall. And out of bounds off the of Puckett. Good job by Puckett to sprint back and transition. One of the things that we always point to is bench points with South Carolina and Tennessee. And Tennessee staying with them right there. It was 5-3 at the break. No, it's Sarah Puckett. They're going to call that change of possession. Puckett had two hands on it, fell out of bounds. So a fresh 30 for South Carolina. How about the toughness on the road of Tennessee? This is a much different looking team this weekend versus last weekend, Courtney. And we saw them, LSU. saw them at home against LSU. What's different? Their toughness, their ability to stay in plays longer, the way they've executed offensively. And Kelly Harper has done a great job of fixing some of the issues they had against LSU. And there's Rakia on it, making a defensive play. Watkins able to get there. She's got to shoot it. And a shot clock violation. It's okay, Coach Daly. You need a little bad film to watch tomorrow. You've got a lot of good film. You've got a lot of good film. <laughs> Will Spear, no. And there's a foul on Camila Cardoso. So that'll be her third. But Tamari Key has got to assert herself here in the second half. Like Cardoso dominated the paint. Too big, too strong, two feet in the paint, two points all game. Cardoso will take a seat with her double-double, 14 points, 10 rebounds, her 13th double-double of the season. Puckett shakes the defender looking for two, no. And it's South Carolina ball. Coming up next, don't forget, top 25 battle, Louisville and Notre Dame. Then after that, triple header will be capped off a little rivalry, Duke, North Carolina. Duke won the first matchup between them and North Carolina. Went to overtime, actually. Pow Pow just hunting that foul. A little change of pace off the bounce. That's an experienced guard right there, very experienced. Uh, Don Staley has described her cool, calm, and collected. That kind of rubs off on her teammates, too. You know, one of the things we talked to Dawn Staley about before the game was the two-way guards that she has this year, which makes her team completely different. You know, two-way guard meaning what? Offense and defense. They can score. They can also defend. And they can defend multiple actions. They can score into all three levels. And it's not just, I said, when you think about the two-way guard you have, what it comes to mind, she said, big two-way guard. Yes. Long, <laughs> athletic, and deep. You felt like she had that on her 27 national championship team? I thought she had it on 17, and I thought she had it on 22. I also thought she had it on 20, but we didn't have the tournament that year. South Carolina was the unanimous, unanimous number one team at the end of that COVID season when the year was canceled. Watkins up and in. Always hoping for a dunk when she gets loose. Bucket in trouble, possession arrow pointing to Tennessee. Tamari Key catches it underneath the basket, and instead of traveling, she tries to make a play. Ashlyn Watkins, ready for a gift. Watkins, five points, one rebound. Too much for Rakia Jackson on that shot. Oh, good pass fake by Jasmine Powell, sets that up. I'll tell you what, Jasmine Powell has played a much better floor game today also. 
Shot selection better, not turning the ball over. She sets this up right here. Watch this pass fake. She pass fakes. The defender drops her hands. It gives her wide open vision. Puckett's got great position inside. Puckett trying to get her own rebound. Bree Hall's defense on display today. The block. Hall had a big block and took a charge in the first half at key moments for South Carolina. I mean, Puckett didn't need to counter there. She just needed to power up. I think this is a really good substitution by Kelly Harper. I thought Pucker was starting to get a little frustrated, but you're going to need her to come right back. There are two whistles on that one, Courtney. Yeah, and it's on Caroline Striplin of Tennessee. It has to be right if there's two whistles on it. Usually when yeah. officials, you know, like two people they, seeing it, they got all their areas are supposed to cover, but Oh, Powell almost had it. Raven setting things up. This is isolation for Watkins. They go horns, they clear the bottom person all the way through to the other side and let Watkins catch it on the elbow. They ran that a lot against Arkansas. And that's a travel on Rakia Jackson. Turnover number 10 for Tennessee. Lady Vols without points for the last three minutes and 17 yeah, seconds. It's a really critical time right here. They've only scored two points in a quarter. Fagan trying to hustle through the double team. Gave it everything she had, but couldn't finish. Caroline Striplin, no. It's a good chance for early offense. And that pass goes between Ashlyn Watkins' legs. Tennessee break the scoring streak. Do you like the shots they're getting? I like this shot. Bank. I like the ISO for Rakia Jackson. She's got 17. Pow Pow got the board. Bree Hall. Another chance for South Carolina. And again, all over the glass. Second on Striplin. Strong, long, determined. That's how I would describe South Carolina on the boards. That's where their toughness comes in, right there. They're winning the battle on the glass, 34 to 23. They have 16 offensive rebounds. The other thing is the wear down component that you have to manage. And if you're Kelly Harper, you have to manage that right now in the game. How do you do that? You've got to make sure that you utilize time and score, execution. you got to sh shorten the game right now instead of speeding it up. I mean, if you get, good, get some early offense, you want to take that. But you gotta, you gotta keep your eye on Rakia Jackson and let her rest on defense, Courtney, and go to her on this end of the floor. Let her make decisions with the ball in her hands. A couple players get tripped up underneath. Everybody seems to be okay, though. We'll step aside. And now for today's Star Stories, it's brought to you by Home Depot. We're checking in on our stars, Camila Cardoso, with another double-double, her 13th of the season, 14 points, 10 rebounds. Rakia Jackson has 17 points, 
Keep in mind, last time against South Carolina, she had 19, and we're in the third quarter right now. Yeah, that's why managing the pace of the game. You know, I'm always talking about the rhythm and having a change of pace. Right now, Tennessee needs to execute, slow it down. You can't go up and down with South Carolina. Then you really get worn out, and the separation will become greater. This is a real critical end of the third quarter for Tennessee to execute and get the shots they want, not the one South Carolina wants them taking. Before the timeout, Ashlyn Watkins was called for her third foul. She's on the bench right now for Carolina. Great help by Fager. Stolen away by Rakia. She's got Powell in the corner if she needs her. The turnaround swish. She has perfected that footwork, and she runs right up the backside of Fagan, forcing that matchup. And then the terrific fadeaway. What's her best asset that she takes to the next level, projected to be a top five pick? Scoring ability at any level. The ability to play in ball screen offense. Jewel Spear looking for transition. You said slow it down, though. And create her own. Well, you got the right people. Like, that's a three-point shooter. OK, so I'm, yeah. I'm good with that shot. But watch right here. Right up the backside of Fagan. It's what you're supposed to do in transition. Then the spin away, step away. I've seen a couple of outstanding moves. And see Tennessee going to a little zone here. Oh, show zone, stay in man. We did see a possession to zone in the first half. Marquia's going after the glass right now, too. Tess Darby, another three-point shooter. And it stays with Tennessee. This is a small thing, but as a shooter, if you don't put it right on the money in the pocket, you got to alter where your pocket is. So that's what happened to Darby, because that's a knockdown shooter in the corner. Tennessee has brought in Avery Strickland, number 13 in orange. Strickland with the rebound back out top to Des Tess Derby. She'll take the road bounce. That's a nice move off the bounce. Des Darby showing she's not just a catch and shoot. Oh, this is a tough matchup right here. Full while he's got to take this one off the bounce. Absolutely. And it drops in two. Second foul against Rakia Jackson. This is where you see the maturity in the young freshman. Watch right here. She's like, no way are they guarding me. Help late. That help's got to be outside the lane. What a move by the freshman. I think she may have taken a little contact to the face, too. Malaysia Full Wiley impressed everyone in her very first collegiate game in Paris, France, with the highlight that went viral. We got a lot of good freshmen in the game. She's one of them. Good back door. Darby couldn't finish. Sanaya Fagan leading the break. Largest lead for the Gamecocks. Without Jackson on the floor, gonna have to go inside, and that's a good decision right there. Jackson, Kelly Harper trying to catch a couple minutes. Flyley, she found it. And 
got it right back. You want to know about a player that can get everybody off their seat and on their feet in Columbia, South Carolina. There she is right there, Full Wiley. So quick and explosive change of pace in traffic, her signature. So we're trying to figure out what's going on here in Columbia right now. We think they may have stopped play, thinking there was a timeout called. And they just called a technical foul on Kelly Harper. Trying to figure out exactly what's going on. I thought Tennessee called timeout. We'll figure this out and let you know. We step aside for now. Okay, so all kinds of confusion here, but we have cleared it up. There was a foul whistled before Tennessee called timeout. After that foul was whistled on Kaya Wynn, the officials asked Kelly Harper if she still wanted her timeout. She said yes. There was no technical foul called against Kelly Harper. Yeah, you see Don Staley asking, was it a timeout or a technical? No technical foul was called. Tennessee took a timeout. Kaya Wynn was whistled for the foul, and Mylasia Full Wiley has a couple shots coming. Well, it was a great hustle play by Full Wiley to get to the free throw line because she scored and then she stole it, and that's how she got fouled. And Alicia Full Wiley, six points. I think what Coach Harper was upset about is that she did want a timeout at one point, and the officials weren't looking at her to see if she wanted one. Before they inbounded? Before they inbounded. Then they had the discussion. Then they did call timeout. That's where the confusion on the technical came from, and that's why Dawn was confused as well. But there were people behind the scores table that made it look like there was a technical foul. Because they were all chanting and, you know, yeah. doing their technical foul stuff. <laughs> it's a technical term. Yes. <laughs> Jules Spear with a nice, nice bucket. South Carolina has hit its last three shots. Tess Darby almost had that one. 10 seconds for the Gamecocks. Good extra. Wiley crushed it! One more pass. A good shot to a better one. Stripling trying to battle inside. They get her. She's been very effective in her minutes in the second half. She's worked really hard for position inside. Ball was loose. Chloe Kitts to it. the flash and the style and then there's that and that's what happens with freshmen up and down and the crowd loves it though and Dawn Staley's patient with it because she sees the other side what it can be coast to coast at the buzzer Jasmine Powell but South Carolina up after three trying to remain undefeated on the season. This is part of the reason why you talk about unselfish play. A good shot to a better one. In the last five games, South Carolina has assisted on 65% of their baskets, and that's why the bench loves it. Yep, 
Here she is. Keep your eyes on her. There she goes. Her patented signature, and then the hustle play right there to draw the foul. Our McDonald's All-American Spotlight, Malaysia Full Wiley. A couple of highlights in there, 10 points, four of eight from the field. And this is a freshman that came in. You talked about Dawn letting her play through those mistakes. Dawn has said too, Malaysia knows what her standard is, and she holds herself to that. Sometimes it takes a while for a younger player to understand, but she came in knowing what it was. Well, I had the North Carolina game in Chapel Hill when she made two defensive mistakes back to back and Dawn Satter didn't put her back in. And it was, the bench is the ultimate teacher when you have the kind of depth that South Carolina has. And she's become a better defender. That's just one, one incident that, to point to about her development. And that'll be something that you will be pointing to for uh, a long time because she is a heck of a player. She's become a better practice player too. Again, standards. Right? Her standard and Dawn's. They better match. <laughs> you think Dawn has a high standard? Yeah, they better match. <laughs> I just say that. <laughs> I don't think Coach Saley gets enough credit for the motivation, the transparency with her players, the communication process. Yes, they've gotten better. Yes, they have a scheme. They have two-way players. Some of them could have left. They stayed. Player development is a big part of getting better in the offseason. All of her players have gotten better. That's why when we, the beginning of the game, Courtney, when you asked about, did anyone think that they'd be 28-0 at this point? No, because at the beginning of the year, they were preseason number six. They had lost their starting five to the WNBA draft. They had a lot of question marks. They didn't have a lot of experience. They had a lot of players that had to fill into new roles, and they've done that, and they've done it at a high level. And you've heard Tahina Pow Pow talk. Uh, she went on Haley Jones's podcast and said, you know, this summer was one of the hardest that she's been a part of, her first summer at South Carolina, because there were so many mistakes. There were so many young players. They were figuring each other out. She goes, we as a team, we didn't think that we were going to be the number one team in the nation, but wow, how things have changed. Well, LSU loses on the road to Colorado. South Carolina goes to number one, and they haven't given up the spot. Three hall short. Powell hitting the gas. And a hard collision. The foul on Raven Johnson. Powell pops up quickly. South Carolina, the only team in the top 30 in scoring offense and defense. They've beaten six, six ranked opponents. That's more than any other team in the nation. 13 wins against the net top 50. The net, of course, a big tool that the selection committee looks at to evaluate how good a team is, where they should be seated in the bracket. One of many pieces of criteria that is looked at. How you play, how you finish. Regular season and conference tournament, I do think factors in. I think there's a lot of criteria that the committee looks at. The AP poll is not one of them. The eye test as well. I think the eye test is really important. Jackson almost had herself a steal. Shot clock did not reset. Seven seconds. And it'll be Tennessee ball. Down eight. What an opportunity right here. So Kelly Harper managed Rakia Jackson, sat her. South Carolina build a double digit lead. Now Rakia Jackson's in for the finish. They got to get her the ball. On the other hand, South Carolina set Camila Cardoso for most of the third quarter, and she is back in. Only played two minutes in the third quarter. Already has a double-double. Little step-up action right here. That's a good piece of execution by Tennessee. 
That's the fourth on Cardoso. You have to attack the outside hip of Cardoso when she put, when South Carolina puts two on the ball. And that's what Jackson does. There's the foul. So Cardoso right back out. Ashlyn Watkins back in. Rakia Jackson at the free throw line. Tennessee has shot 87% from the charity strike today. This is that one. with Kitts. It's going to be really critical here for Powell to make good decisions with the balls in her hands. Back out to Tess Darby. Rakia Jackson making things happen. She's at 24. I think it was such a key coaching move for Kelly Harper to give her that break with Avery Strickland on the floor. Here's that clear out I love for Watkins. And Tess Darby whistled for the foul. Watch how quick Rakia Jackson gets off her feet right here. The pump fake uses the bounce to get some energy to the rim. Ninth time this season, Rakia Jackson is at 20 or more points. It's a 10-0 run for Tennessee. Shooters follow when shooters know the shot is off. South Carolina has not scored in the fourth quarter. Five seconds. Swatted away by Tamari Key. She's Tennessee's all-time blocks leader. Oh, she traveled. Yep. Chloe Kitts on the travel. Nine turnovers for South Carolina. Elijah Full Wiley, Sonia Fagan back in for South Carolina. Sarah Puckett in the game for Tennessee. Again, a 10 0 run for Tennessee going back to the third quarter. I mean, what a good fight in Tennessee, right? Sold out, proud, as loud, and, and engaged. Gotta make a good choice here. Well, they go to that step up screen, and this time Rakia Jackson refuses it and drives to the middle. I think she had a little float game right there at the SEC logo. She could have thrown up. Gamecocks still looking for their first points in this quarter. Fulwiley will come get it. Fouled by Jasmine Powell. Again, such an important game for Tennessee. South Carolina is that top seed in the SEC tournament, but Tennessee either needs a win today or an Alabama loss in order to get the double bye in Greenville this week. If not, they drop to a five seed. Alabama on the road at AM. That tips off at 3 o'clock today. Alabama has the tiebreaker over Tennessee. And Christy Curry's had a heck of a year this year. Her team is really solid. They play good D, they move the ball. Sarah Ashley Barker is She's taking a big jump. Huge. Those free throws, the first two points for Carolina here in the fourth.
Oh, and Powell took a hard hit. Fagan coming in. Her third. Hard foul, earn it at the free throw line. That was a good decision by Powell. Keep in mind, this is the real only true point guard that Kelly Harper has this year. So Powell has done a much better job of playing the game under control today on the road. Destiny Wells went down with an injury in December, and that put even more of the responsibility on Jasmine Powell. It's going to be South Carolina ball. Spear back in for Tennessee. Camilla Cardoso back in for South Carolina. They don't have a field goal in the fourth quarter. What defensively is Tennessee doing to the Gamecocks right now? They're just guarding the ball, not guarding the action. They're keeping the ball in front of them, and they're rebounding. That's the difference. They're not giving second-chance opportunities. Ashlyn Watkins up to seven points. Spear, loose. She was due. She's had a couple of good looks that she couldn't complete. Oh, there's a huge mistake in transition. The pow pow misses. It's a break for Tennessee. Rakia at the free throw line. Well, you know Cardoso is in drop coverage, so you don't over penetrate. You pull up at the nail and knock it down. Cardoso's got four fouls on the floor right now. Working, giving everything she's got for that bucket. Back to a five-point lead. South Carolina has led by as many as 15. I'd go to the same action if I was Tennessee. Just put Rakia Jackson back in that elbow action. Ball screen. Cardoso in drop coverage. Drop coverage means she's in the paint. She's not coming out. But Wiley fed it through a triple team. 18 and 13 for Camilla. And Tennessee will take a timeout. Tennessee is staying tight with some incredible offensive toughness. Behind the speed screen, and Spear knocks it down. And then Rakia Jackson off the elbow screen action, knocks it down. Come on back, this is fun. Caitlin Clark trying to catch up to Pistol P, needs those two points. She's got 16. I think it's absolutely amazing. And yes, Pistol P played three years and he didn't have the three, but you put it in context with what an incredible, great scorer Caitlin Clark is. Her name in the same sentence matters. That's why we're talking about it. In her last game, she passed Lynette Woodard. Now looking for Pistol Pete's record. Points by Tess Darby there. Tennessee pushing South Carolina here in the fourth quarter. They have outscored the Gamecocks 14 to eight. Good D by Jackson that time on the Watkins ISO. Spear into traffic. It stays with the Lady Vols. That's a component of Tennessee's offense that I think they've managed much better today. Get in the paint, kick. Don't try to score over Cardoso. Try to set up somebody else. Make the game easier for your teammates. Watkins swiped it. Shakes off her Kia. That's a huge play.
This is an emotional defensive play. The pick, and then the finish. Ooh, she might have drugged that. A little. Watkins going up and going to the free throw line. She is an incredible combination of speed and power. Ashlyn Watkins. Third foul against Tamari Key. Jillian, Jillian Hollingshed will replace her. But Ashlyn Watkins, they talk about her understanding of things has just taken it to a next level. You'll see her directing traffic, telling the guards what she needs, where to go. Just a sophomore. Got to really be ready to box out here if you're Tennessee. Missed them both. Bree Hall got the rebound. Timeout. You've got to be ready to box out on the free throw line when you have a free throw shooter that doesn't shoot a high percentage. You know you got to squeeze and pinch. And Tennessee doesn't do that, and Bree Hall comes down with a huge play. Back-to-back -back big plays for South Carolina. The steal and the finish by Watkins, the offensive rebound on the free throw line. Now, Bree Hall has had some key plays at key moments, not just her scoring. She's got 11 points, all of those coming in the first half. Tennessee has one timeout remaining. South Carolina will have three as we're under three minutes to go here. Lady Balls have not beaten the number one team in the nation since 2005 when they beat LSU in the SEC tournament. They got to get a stop right here. Missed the second opportunity for Wiley alone. Cardoso offensive board. Remember how Tennessee was staying with him on the glass? This is where game slippage happens, right here. You've got to tighten up if you're Tennessee. Four offensive rebounds on this possession for Carolina. Well, Caitlin Clark has done it. 18 points, she passes Pistol Pete Maravich as the all-time leading scorer. And it's been incredible to watch, of course, earlier this week, she announced she's going to the WNBA draft, projected to be that number one overall pick. She is gonna be fun to watch in the NCAA tournament. She said the pressure was off after making the announcement. And Camilla Cardoso has fouled out of the game, Cardoso 18 points, 14 rebounds on her senior day, playing in front of her mom and sister for the first time in the States since she moved here when she was 15 years old from Brazil. South Carolina was able to get them in to see her senior day today. Uh-oh. Third on Jackson. What changes without Camilla Cardoso for South Carolina? If anything. I mean, they have so much depth. Oh, they can absorb foul trouble, depth uh, with their depth, injuries, situational things in games. They, they, it's fine. Both good for Ashlyn Watkins.
Makia Jackson should make decisions with the ball right here. Good pressure by Watkins. Then she got a hand on that for Jewel Spear as she was driving in. This is where you want Pow Pow. Little Iverson cut. She can probably reject the screen there. South Carolina ball. And here's going to be a good teaching point from Full Wiley tomorrow. That play was run for her, but she didn't have a good option. So she should have moved the ball. That's another level, right? Just because they call your number doesn't mean you have to take the shot. On court ruling is South Carolina basketball pending review. So we're looking at possession of this. Who touched it last? Oh, it's clearly it's off pal. This should not take long. Yeah, right there. She's the last one to touch it. No problem of seeing that. It will be South Carolina ball. A minute After 30 to go. The encore ruling is confirmed. Game clock will be reset to 131. We played a little Hootie and the Blowfish in the house, and Darius Rucker is here today, sitting behind the South Carolina bench. There he is. How cool is that? Picked a good one to come to. The fifth sellout of the season for South Carolina. Bringing out the celebrities. She is a one person trap breaker. Tipped back in by Ashlyn Watkins. I would say untrappable, unflappable for Wiley. Spear lets it fly. Tennessee needed it. What an answer. Get it right back to Full Wiley. Let her handle. There's a turnover. It's a good hustle by Tennessee. They almost had that one. Tennessee has one timeout. South Carolina has three. Both teams in the bonus, so a foul by either team sends the opponent to the free throw line. Tennessee asking to review it. I wish the officials would say, we don't need to review it. We're 100% confident who the ball went off. Carolina basketball pending review. The fans don't like it when we slow the game down like this. There's too much excitement in the building. I thought for sure it went off her right there. Off of Tess Darby? Yes. I thought it hit the back of her foot. Yeah. Right here, she's reaching for it, but watch the spin of the ball does not change. So it is South Carolina's ball. How does Tennessee? After review, the encore ruling is confirmed. The game clock will be reset to 107. So how does Tennessee approach this? I think they got to keep the pressure up. They're trying to speed up the game. They need possessions, but they got to get stops with their defense. This is Kelly Harper's best defensive team on the floor right here. And then on the offensive end, you got to come back and score, and I'd go through Jackson. Tennessee doesn't have any fouls to give. And I wouldn't foul here. I play really good D. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Malaysia for Wiley. Threw up the arm bar and displaced the defender. Watch the push off right here. She extends that arm. This 
So Tennessee down eight. Puckett wasn't looking for the ball. Spear got there in time for three. Now you gotta look to foul. South Carolina 30 seconds away from 29 straight wins this season. Let me just say this, Courtney, what an incredible atmosphere today. Dawn Staley can never grow tired of looking around this arena and seeing what she has built. Her chest must just be pumping like crazy some days. It's amazing in here. Fifth sellout of the season, that is a school record. They were lined up outside to get in, open the doors early today for this one. Count the bucket for Rakia Jackson, but she has turned over on the floor. Tennessee had a moment, and it was in the fourth quarter where South Carolina just crushed them on the glass. Multiple offensive rebounds, extra possessions, and they had done such a good job of not allowing that to happen. Rakia Jackson, you yeah. see her immediately grabbing her ankle. And her left ankle when she came down gave way. Glad to see her back up. She has been a highlight reel today. 28 points, eight rebounds. She's been fantastic. She just needs a little more help, and I think the help is there. Jewel Spears got to knock down a few more shots. And I'm going to give a little shout out to Stripling, too, because she played really well in her minutes. Untrappable, unflappable. Jasmine Powell fouls with 10.5 left. Dawn Staley didn't know what she had coming into this season. Maybe she didn't know if she, she had a 29-0 team, but they're about to be in 10 and a half seconds. Tennessee's got to hope for a little help today from Texas A&M so they can get to that top four in the SEC tournament to get the double bye. Now they need Texas A&M to beat Alabama in order to do that. Entertaining, fun to watch, incredible environment. Big win for the Gamecocks. No one has been able to stop South Carolina. 29-0 feels pretty good for the Gamecocks. Back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons, 57 straight home wins.